All right, everyone, welcome back. Appreciate everybody being here today. Um, I have what I think is gonna be a good one for us. It's the top 10 places to visit in 2024. Now, this is from Ryan Shirley. We know he does fantastic work, and obviously this is his opinion. This isn't necessarily the top tw or the top 10 places, period, for everybody to visit, but his opinion. So I'm excited to get into it. But before we get going, I have a mission for you guys. At the end of this video, after we watch all 10 places, tell me which one that he chose you would most like to go to. And then after that, Tell me which one of your choice you would most like to go to. If he didn't list it on here, where would you like most like to go? His and then yours. And I will tell you at the end of this video what the places that he has selected for us I would most like to go to. So, without further ado, it's about a 12 minute video. Um, let's just hop into it. The top 10 places to visit in 2024. What's up guys, my name is Ryan, and with almost all countries open for tourism, Gosh. I think we're all excited to travel to some new destinations this year. So here's my top 10 places to visit. One thing I like about Ryan, stop it, you know, 10 seconds in, is he doesn't typically pick like the, um, the really popular places. He likes to pick a lot of different locations and allows you to see and, and take in different parts of the world. So I like in these videos that he does. With tourism almost completely back to normal, 2024 is going to be a year full of travel. Whether you explore the dramatic landscapes that. of the Faroe Islands or go on an African safari in Tanzania, I hope you can all safely visit some new places this year. Let's start this video off in Croatia. Croatia. I was able to go to Croatia last summer and it quickly became one of my favorite countries. From the incredible scenery of the Dalmatian coast to medieval seaside towns, Croatia is one of Europe's hidden gems. Island. One of the most iconic places in Croatia is Dubrovnik. Located in the southernmost part of Croatia, Dubrovnik is this incredible medieval city built right on the Adriatic Sea. One of my favorite things that I did during my time in Dubrovnik was walking on top of the city walls. You're able to loop the entire city and experience Dubrovnik from a new perspective. Another impressive place in Croatia is Plitvica Lakes National Park. I remember seeing pictures of this place years ago and I've been wanting to see them in person ever since. The area is renowned for its crystal clear terraced lakes that are so connected beautiful. by beautiful waterfalls. Look at if that. you want to experience one of Croatia's unique islands, I really enjoyed Duki Oto. It's one of Croatia's longest islands and it's home to the tallest lighthouse in the Adriatic Sea. One of my favorite features of the island was the Teleschica Nature Park. The area had a bay full of islands and then there are these impressive sea cliffs. I mean, just such a unique place. After, we're going to head over to the country of Iceland. So I see a lot of House Hunters International kind of helps me kind of get ideas of, you know, some countries and stuff. And Croatia is always one of the ones I see that is super underrate, underrated to go to as a country. That was a beautiful country. Known as the land of fire and ice, Iceland is easily one of the most beautiful countries in Europe and the world. With volcanic landscapes, endless waterfalls, and gigantic wow. glaciers, Iceland is home to some of the most incredible wow. places on Earth. Probably the most well-known region in the country is Southern Iceland. It takes about two to three hours to get here wow. from Reykjavik, and there's just so many attractions and beautiful places. One of the most well-known spots is Skokofoss. It's probably the most iconic waterfall in the country. Its drop is 60 was... meters high, and the power of the falls is insane. Now, one of my favorite destinations insane. in the area is Rainus Fjord. Not that waterfall, that, that like, cratery valley thing that we've seen right Whew. The beach. It's this incredible coastline that stretches a few kilometers to the west. The sand is so black and unique. My favorite feature of the beach is the Rainus Dringa rock formations. There are these jagged sea stacks that jet out of the sea with constant waves pounding on them. One of my personal favorite places in Iceland is its highlands. It's located in the interior of the country and it's an extremely unique region home to other worldly landscapes. Ah, One of the most impressive places is Landmannaugur. It's home to rainbow colored mountains and there's a good amount of volcanic activity in the area with tons of formolas shooting out steam. I mean, Iceland just has so many incredible places to explore. While we're still in the Nordics, we're gonna visit the Faroe Islands. I visited these incredible islands last year and became one of my favorite places I've ever been. The Faroe Islands are located between Iceland and Norway and they're home to some of the most dramatic and epic landscapes in the world. I just gotta take a second, I'm sorry. That is just insane. That is breathtaking. I mean, and call me weird, I've said it in other videos, but just the last shot in this shot right here, yes, it's a little blue in the sky, but I really feel like the overcast and almost the dreariness and the fog and the clouds One of the main reasons the I want to go the here is to see the drink on your sea stack. You can either get there by taking a guided six hour hike or you can also go on a boat ride. I decided to take the quick boat ride and I had a cruel time exploring the area and marveling at the one of a kind sea stack. 
Nearby is the Mulfusor Waterfall. Find a way to fall. It's one of the most scenic waterfalls <laughs> I've ever right seen as it cascades down into the sea. Another incredible place is Kalsoy. It's this narrow island, and I had to take a ferry to get onto it. At the end of Kalsoy, there's this lighthouse perched wow. on these massive sea cliffs. It was easily one of the most epic places I've ever Look been. At that. Nothing quite matches the landscapes of the Faroe Islands. No, After I, I would have to get agree. a change of scenery and head over to the country of Oman. Located on the easternmost region of the Arabian See? Peninsula, he the Oman is sometimes. easily one of the most beautiful countries in the Middle East. It's home to endless sand dunes, <clears throat> historical forts, and idyllic beaches. The capital city is Muscat, and it's a great starting point to explore Oman. If you like the mountains, you can oh visit Jebel Shalom. It's the highest peak in the country with an elevation of 3,009 meters. One of my favorite regions in Oman is the southern part of the country near Salala. Now in the area, there's the Darvet Waterfall, and it's also home to some of Oman's best beaches. One of my favorites is Eftalakot Beach. It's a pristine area with rolling waves, Look white sand, and impressive rocky cliff as a backdrop. I mean, what more could you ask for? Oman truly Not is an amazing country. After we're wow. going to visit the nearby island of Socotra. Located in the Arabian Sea, Socotra is one of the most mystical and beautiful islands in the world. Now, when you travel to Socotra, it's best to go with a tour company. They will help guide you around the island and get you the proper visas and also schedule your flights out of the UAE to get there. Now, one of my favorite features of Socotra is its dragon tree. It's one of the most unique looking trees I've seen, and it has a red sap that looks like blood. Now the coastline of Socotra is also amazing, it has crystal clear water and white sand beaches. I particularly like Arhar Beach with its sand dunes that are sandwiched between the cliffs and the coast. Socotra scenery is truly on another level. Now after, we're going to head to Africa to visit Morocco. Morocco. Located in Northern Africa, Morocco was one of the most diverse and historical countries. It's home to snow-capped mountains, a mesmerizing coastline, and also the Sahara Desert. One of my favorite places is Ait Ben Hadou. It's a historic Clay Brick Village yes, that, that dates back okay. to the 11th century. That's it's a been unique a popular looking filming site for movies and TV building, shows yeah, such man. as Game of Thrones. Another impressive place in Morocco is the Atlas Mountains. I mean, you wouldn't expect to find much snow in Morocco, but the Atlas Mountains are an exception. The highest peak is Toubkal with an elevation of 4,167 meters. Now, when it comes to Morocco cities, Casablanca is the largest. My favorite feature of the city is the Hassan II Mosque. It was built in 1993, and its minaret stands 210 meters tall. Now, as for Morocco's beaches, one of the most unique ones is Lexira Beach. It's located in southern Morocco on the Atlantic Ocean. It has red rock and this very peculiar arch. I and mean, there's just so much to see in this incredible country. After it, we're going to visit Sri Lanka, located right below India. Sri Lanka is an incredibly lush island country, and it's one of the places I want to visit most this year. It has an incredible coastline and offers some of the best places to wow. go on a safari in Asia. One of the most recognizable places on Sri Lanka is Sigiriya or Lion Rock. Mm -hmm. I've it's this it, massive yeah. monolith that sticks out of the landscape, and on top of it, there's an ancient fortress that was built here in the 5th century AD. Another iconic attraction in Sri Lanka is it's- Just imagine all the way back then, just climbing up that and then building a fortress on it. I mean, I look at it right there and I see all the, the modern you know stairs and everything to get up there, and I'm, I'm sketched out by it, but imagine doing it all the way back there. Trains, the Nine Arches wow. Bridge is one of the most famous spots. It reminds me of the Glenfinnan Viaduct in Scotland. Sri Lanka is such an underrated country. After, we're going to head back to Europe to visit the island of Corsica. Located in the Mediterranean, Corsica is easily one of Europe's most beautiful and diverse islands. It's home to idyllic beaches, jagged mountains, and historical cities. Wow. One of my favorite places I visit on the island is Bonifacio. It's this medieval town that's built upon these sea cliffs. I mean, it seriously looks like it's going to fall into the ocean. I really enjoyed exploring the town, and there's also a picturesque harbor that was really nice to walk through. As for the beaches, I really love St. Anthony Beach. It's located just a few minutes drive from Bonifacio, and it took about 30 minutes of hiking to reach the beach. There was a massive rock formation that made for the most epic backdrop. While I was there, I noticed this cave in the rock so I swam over to it and to my surprise it was a tunnel that connected to the other side it was such a fun place huh. to explore if you want more of a chill beach experience, I love that kind of stuff. you can visit the area around Pomombaja it's home to crystal clear calm waters perfect for relaxing on the Mediterranean another one of my favorite places in Corsica is the Tor de Turcu it's this medieval watchtower that's perched upon these cliffs it was a somewhat demanding hike and took us an hour to reach the tower but we were rewarded with some insane 360 views of Corsica's coast wow. it would be a perfect place to spot incoming pirates back in the day after it, we're going to head to the South Pacific to visit the islands of French Polynesia Located okay. in the middle of the Pacific Ocean, French Polynesia is the definition of tropical paradise. 
It's home to pristine beaches, lush mountains, and the clearest water you've ever seen. Wow. If you come to French Polynesia, Whew. your first flight is Tahiti. Tahiti. It's the biggest Should, island yeah. in the country, and it's home to one of the most famous waves in the world that is located just off the coast of the small village of Tiopu. Now, one of my favorite Stop islands in French that. Polynesia Damn. is Morea. It's located right next to Tahiti, and you can get there by either flying or taking a ferry. Look it's at that. known as the Pearl of the Sea, and it's one of the most beautiful places I mean, look I've at that. ever been. I particularly like Morea's mountains. They are so jagged and unique looking. If you're more into beaches, there's some amazing ones such as Tahiamanu. It's this really relaxing beach with sailboats and amazing scenery. It's also a spectacular place to watch the sunset. While we're still in French Polynesia, we're going to head to Bora Bora. Of all the islands in French Polynesia, Bora Bora is probably the most famous and after visiting it, I totally understand why. The geography of Bora Bora is pure perfection. There's the main island with its towering dormant volcano and then it's surrounded by this reef that protects the island from the waves of the Pacific Ocean. Inside the reef, there's a lagoon which is home to some of the world's clearest water and is full of wildlife such as sharks and rays. One of my favorite that places doesn't make in Bora Bora get in it. <laughs> is the Southwest Lagoon. There's this sandbar there that creates for one of the most epic scenes with Mount Ultimano in the back. There was also some great snorkeling in the area. We went out on a little boat and we were able to swim with some sharks. If you want to experience tropical paradise this year, you got to give French Polynesia a visit. For our final destination, we're going to head back to Africa to experience Tanzania. I went to Tanzania about 10 months ago and it was one of the most memorable trips of my life. From witnessing herds of millions Look, of wildebeest roam the savannah to Africa's highest mountain, Tanzania is one of the world's greatest wonders. One of the most iconic places in Tanzania is the Serengeti. It's one of the best places on earth to see Africa's wildlife. From leopards chilling in trees to cheetahs roaming the savannah, the Serengeti is the lion king in real life. While we were there, we went on game drives every day. We were able to witness so many incredible moments, whether it was watching two lionesses enjoying the sunset or witnessing the endless herds of wildebeest. The most memorable moment was when we escaped a massive thunderstorm when we were able to watch these zebras grazing accompanied by massive thunderbolts and the craziest sunset I've ever seen in my life. Now besides the Serengeti, my other favorite place in Tanzania is Aldonio Lengai. It's located near Lake Natron and it's an active volcano with a height just under 3,000 meters and it's known by the local tribes as the Mountain of God. And after scaling it, I totally understand why it has that name. So we decided we wanted to climb the volcano, so we started at midnight, and I honestly didn't know what I was getting myself into, but it ended up being the hardest hike of my life. Right, now. right around 6 a.m., we made it to the top, and the sun started to climb over the horizon, and I just couldn't believe my eyes. I was standing on the volcano's rim, and the crater was absolutely huge. It had this black bubbling lava inside and it's said to be some of the coldest lava in the world. The volcano was just so loud, you could hear the earth groaning and it sounded like a thunderstorm. As I walked to the other side, I got one of my all time favorite shots as I was standing on the volcano's rim overlooking the scenery below. It reminded me of the quote in Lion King where Mufasa says to Simba, everything the light touches is our kingdom. It was one of the most powerful views I've ever seen in my life. Our guide Elijah recommended that we headed back after spending about two hours on the top to avoid the midday sun. The trek was beautiful on the way down. When we reached our car, it was about noon, so it took us 12 hours in total. Even though it was one of the hardest physical challenges I've ever done, it was hands down one of my all-time favorite travel experiences. Wow. Well, that is it for my 2024 20, top 10. Let me know where you want to travel this year in the comments below. You can follow me on Instagram and TikTok at Shirley.Films. If you guys Smile haven't subscribed to him we'll yet. see you later. Okay, well, you know you know what the, what the, um, the mission I gave you was at the beginning. After you've seen the video, where's, where's one of the places that he mentioned you go? I, at first, I was like, I'd go to Croatia. And I was like, well, Iceland looks pretty nice. And I was like, oh, the Faroe Islands were nice. Ah. If I had to pick one, for me, it would probably be Croatia. Just because it looks to be... I don't know. I don't know. It just it Something strikes me about it. Like It's always been underrated in the back of my mind, but I've never really thought about going to it. Because it's, it's not one of the easier ones for me to go to right off the bat. You know what I mean? So... That would probably be my pick for it, but that was a fantastic video. And here's the thing. There's so many gorgeous places in this world of ours that there's, it's just hard to pick. You know, so I told you I'd pick out of the 10 that he made on here. Mine would be Croatia. I'm not going to tell you where I want to go. Like my personal choice because I don't know yet. <laughs> I just, I'm planning a trip. I just don't know where I want to go because everything's just so amazing. 
but it's also so expensive. <laughs> so um, I hope you guys enjoyed that video as much as I did. Um, if you did, consider leaving a like on it and commenting down below, like I said, for the mission. But also, what else you enjoyed about the video and what country surprised you the most? Um, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. It's free for you. It helps me out tremendously. But other than that, we'll see you guys on the next one, and I appreciate you all being here.